right over here picking these rounds out and I saw turkey feathers right there and right there. And I turned and I saw this. Today in the wood yard, we're on a rescue mission. Here we go. So today, I came to see my dad. I'm on his property right now and I'm on a rescue mission because last time I was here, actually it was about three times ago I was here, I cut a tree down and I left a bunch of the rounds in the woods that I could not load into the truck because it was full. So I came to get those picked up before they disintegrate. And then I've got some wood at my brother's house that I left there probably a month ago that I've got to go pick up. And then there's some wood up over the other end of my dad's property I've got to go pick up. And then there's some wood that my brother and I cut on another property out past his house that's just sitting there that I've got to rescue. So I'm sure that happens to you. I know it happens to me quite a bit where I'll go, you know, cut trees and I can't fit it all in. And uh, so you leave some behind and I just hate doing that because you did all that work to cut it, you know, bring it out and or, you know, get it ready so that you can load it up and it just sits there. And you don't want to let it sit for very long because it'll get rotten. Oak you can leave sit quite a while, but some of this stuff is some poplar or aspen and that rots pretty fast. So you got to get it off the ground, get it split and get it, get it off the ground and drying. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to load up the truck first with some of the wood that I've got. Then I'm going to go probably load it into my trailer because I can't get the trailer back in here. The trailer's up at my dad's place. So I disconnected it, brought the truck in because I have to drive through the woods, backed up going zigzagging it's really hard just to even get the truck in so i came down here and we're going to go load it up right now it's back over this way come on follow me i'll show you come on this way so right down here is a tree that i cut down probably almost a month ago now it was a tree that was a leaner and uh i'm gonna go this way some of these big rounds are right here and then down this way there's some wood down here too that needs to be picked up it's just sitting kind of in a low area so i'm going to get all that stuff picked up i'm going to carry it over to the truck and throw it in right now here we go
well, I was picking up the last few rounds, throwing into a pile, and I looked back over here and I saw something of interest that you're gonna wanna see. When I walked in here, I saw a hen turkey go running across, which is not, not unusual. We see turkeys back here all the time. And it didn't even dawn on me that there's a reason why she was in here. So I was over here digging in the, right over here picking these rounds out and I saw turkey feathers right there and right there. And I turned and I saw this. See if I can get this in here. Look at that. 13 eggs, they're warm, so I better get out of here. She probably wants to get back on them. So there they are. I've seen this quite a few times when I'm cutting trees, like, you know, late winter, where I get a brush pile, and then you're picking up the rounds like this. I've done this probably five or six other times I can remember, where I'm in the tops of the trees, which is where turkeys nest. When a blowdown will go down, you look in the tops, right there it is. A lot of times though, if I can get in there, you can see it again. There it is. But it's always kind of underneath grass and blowdowns and kind of a thicker area like over there, that real thick spot would be a really good spot for a, a hen because they kind of tunnel in. And this one's kind of more open, but a lot of times when I find them, they're just all covered in feathers. So my guess is, is she either just got done laying or is gonna lay one or two more and then sit on them. And uh, cause they're not, the bottom's warm on a couple of them, but the tops weren't that warm on the other one. So I don't know if, you know, she's sitting on them yet or not. I mean, she might be, it's possible, but anyway, the other here's her little route right here's where she comes in right through here into her nest because it's blocked in all other sides just right here's the only opening right there it goes to the eggs so i'm going to get those last few rounds picked up right here and i'm going to pick, pick these up put them in a the truck get out of here so she can get back on them and we're going to go to the next spot here we go again so i just picked up the last few rounds here and i'm going to carry them out throw them in and we're going to drive to the next spot so that took me about 20 minutes to go from back down in that hole there up here to the truck oops and i got uh i don't know quite a bit actually more than i thought there was going to be i had to leave room because i got my saws up front here so i don't want to crush them but that's quite a bit of wood right there i had sitting more than i thought it was going to be so on to the next spot so here we go on the way to our next place there's some my dad's wood that he's got in the woods and uh, come down this road here and go down to the next spot. It's part of his little Christmas tree farm. We're going up to a spot up here where some crazed maniac cut down a tree this winter with an ax. So here we are at stage two of the firewood rescue. This is uh, the wood that some crazed maniac cut down this winter with an ax. I'm just uh, picking up what was left. There's not too much here, but I hate to leave it because it's, uh, it's all cut up. So I'm just gonna toss it in. And then we're gonna go to my brother's house and pick up some wood that I left there that we cut in the woods. So this is just, again, just some poplar aspen, which is not great wood, but it is wood and it will burn. And most of the aspen and poplar I sell for campfire wood.
that's done. Now, I gotta make a trip over to my brother's house and because the sun is getting low in the sky, I think all we're gonna have time for is to get the wood at his house and I'm gonna make it a run for the border and head for home. Cause I'm not gonna have time to drive all the way out past his place to get the other wood. So, but what I got at his place, it'll be, you know, half a trailer load full, which is worth a trip. So there, that's done, going to the next spot. We are now at location number three. I'm at my brother's place. And these are the logs that were left over from stuff that him and I cut together this, so oh, I don't know, a month or so ago, maybe more. And he took all the solid stuff because he made firewood out of it, but I wanted these hollow ones because I want to be able to sell these for the Swedish candles or the chimney fires. And they're hollow, as you can see. So we're gonna load them up right now. It's just popple or aspen, but it will work good for chimney fires because all wood burns. And it's just for campfire type stuff. So I'll sell these in either sets of two or three, hopefully. And I don't even know, I didn't even count. See, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, there's 12 of them here. So hopefully I can get 20 bucks a piece, something like that, I don't know. We'll see. So it's a couple hundred dollars worth of Wood, hopefully, believe it or not. That's what I should be able to get for it. That's what they generally sell for. So I will find out if it's a thing once I advertise. If I can get anybody interested. And I think it's just a matter of having people that have either done it before or have seen it before or have money to literally burn which is pretty much what campfire wood is, people burning money. But I don't have a problem with that. They can burn all the money they want, long as the money burns right into my pocket. And they get to burn their fire and roast their hot doggies and burn some marshmallows, whatever it is they do. Ooh, here's a long one here. Yikes, that is heavy. Whoa. Go. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's ready to go. Two to go. One more. This is like doing reps, lifting weights. There we go. enough for me oh just cleared so now I'm gonna do one more thing while I'm here after I get this closed up we're gonna go for a little walk I gotta ask you a question and this is gonna be an important question it's one of those questions that's uh what would you do if you were me questions so this is the dilemma I'm in with my tractor yes this is a tractor question so we're gonna walk over to my brother's car hauler trailer. And the dilemma is that the tractor I wanna get that is kind of waiting for me right now that I gotta do is say yes to. It's a 45 horsepower tractor. And as it is, it weighs 4,000 pounds. If I weight the tires, it's gonna be right at about 5,000. It's about 950 or so, something like that pounds. So I'd be at 4,950. And that's without any implements, just the, the loader. And the problem is my brother's trailer, the one I would use to haul it with is right here. And I was just looking, I'm gonna take it off the tripod here and I'm gonna go into the specifications. Well, here's the, the thing. His trailer is two axles, 3,500 pounds. So as G, VWR is 7,000 pounds. The trailer itself weighs 2,087 pounds. So your cargo should never exceed 4,600 pounds. I think you guys can see that, there you go. So that means if I get that tractor, I'm technically over the limit on it for this trailer. And it's a trailer that would work just fine. I'm sure it would probably work but I'd be a little bit over the limit. The other tractor I'm looking at, size down from that, 
is a 40 horsepower tractor that weighs in at 3,000 pounds. And if I load the tires, I'd be at 4,000 pounds. Now the smaller of the two tractors weighs, uh, like I said, 3,000-ish, let me be a little over. And if I weight the tires, it would be right around 4,000. Now that tractor can lift at height 1,800 pounds, which is pretty good. But the bigger one that weighs 1,000 pounds more can lift a whole nother 1,000 pounds. Its lift at height is 2,700 pounds. So that's considerably heavier. But I don't know if I'll be able to haul it on the hauler. It'll fit on the hauler width-wise. That wouldn't be a problem. Because I measured it, and it would just fit the bigger of the two tractors. But the littler one would easily fit and would be under the limit. So I know there's going to be safety guys that are going to say, nope, you got to get the little one. But I don't have to get the little one. I could have somebody else haul it with a different trailer. I just wouldn't be able to haul it. I'd be over my limit. My truck will pull about 8,000 pounds, so I'd be pretty maxed out. So, or 8,800, something like that. But it's a nice trailer he's got here, and I'm sure it would work. The question is, for the safety guys, they're going to say, oh, no, you're over the limit. You can't get that. But then there's going to be other guys like, oh, pff, you'll be good for another 1,000 pounds. Go ahead. Go for it. Because I want to be able to bring it here, not to my brother's land, because he's got his own tractor. I'm going to take it to my dad's land and do some work there for him. I want to do some earthwork. I'm going to level out some roads that he's got through his property. I want to move some sand piles that he's got, make some beach area on his, his lake that he's got there. Um, do a bunch of work in the brush, you know, pushing off brush. And I'm going to get a grapple so I'll be able to move brush around. I have the bucket, I'll be able to scrape stuff off. You know, just clear up a lot of the areas that he has. So I want to be able to bring it here to do work. But I don't know what I would do for a trailer if I'd have to have a buddy haul it, which I could do. It's kind of a pain. So what would you do? Would you get the bigger tractor or the littler tractor? Both good choices. Um, the good thing about the littler tractor is it would cost me about i gotta think here for a second about five thousand dollars less that's about what it would be about five grand but everybody says go big go big go big which i would love to do but ah, it's just i'm right at that limit so let me know what would you do so that's it for today folks thanks for being here please hit the button you know what to do hit the like the subscribe the share all that good stuff and then tomorrow you're going to be back in the woodyard because that's where i'm going to be and i know you're coming along because that's what you do i'll see you tomorrow Good night, Irene.